Well, glad to have you back. You're still watching Business Nigeria. The Nigerian Stock Exchange has remained an attractive platform for issuers and investors to meet their investment objectives. Well, thanks to its steady and consistent capacity building in technology, automation and digitization of its operations over the years. The NSC, however, recovered from its bearish end in Friday's trading session and posted a profit at the end of the trading session on Monday, leading to an increase in the all share index of 0.71% to close out. 39,493.37 index points as against a 0.20% 0, 0 loss recorded on Friday. The increase in Monday's reading session uh, was spurred by buying interest in MTN Nigeria PLC, Guarantee Trust Bank, and Lafarge Africa PLC as market capitalization gained 145 billion naira to close at 20.7 trillion naira. We're well, joining me live in Lego Studio, like I said earlier. He's a stockbroker and financial analyst, uh, Mr. Rutimi Fakaijo. Thank you very much for your time. It's good to see you, Mr. Fakaijo. Yes, first, uh, I'd like you to react to that positive uh, trend we saw in the market yesterday. Particularly, I think, stock of GT, I noticed there were a lot of activities around that end. Can you take us through what played out? Um, well, basically, we've seen quite a good number of results. And uh, those results are very positive. And uh, the returns are also very attractive. For the GT Bank that you mentioned, um, there's no more news that they posted a, an after-tax profit of over 200 billion, mm -hmm. just like Zenit Bank. And uh, they equally are paying a dividend of 270 kobo. And uh, we know that uh, investors have special attraction mm -hmm. gravitating towards GT Bank. And uh, for a volume of over 230 million shares, worth about, uh, I think, about 7 billion to be traded on a day, wow. is quite heartwarming. Mm -hmm. And uh, what everyone was thinking before was, uh, basically, GT Bank is one of the stocks that are attracted to foreign portfolio investors. And where the way they have shied away from the market for now, and we are still having this kind of uh, mileage in transactions, mm -hmm. I think it's quite heartwarming, and I, and I believe it's really is a, a good one to support the market further than what we are seeing. And uh, we know that um, certain um, uh, stocks or results actually move the market. So GT Bank has had a lot of impact on the market since the last time that since the time that the result was released. Mm -hmm. And we know fully well that uh, tomorrow is the last trading day to qualify for the two hundred cent cover dividend that they are paying. So that's why we are seeing a lot of activities. And okay. I think uh, it's really, really coming up and making things better for investors. Th thanks for that. I was also read through and I saw Dangote Cement paying about 1.1 trillion naira in dividends. That's in five years, you know, putting all of that together. What, technical, what about Dangote uh, Cement? I heard, uh, at least we saw their figures last week. I think they're also paying dividends to, to, yeah. to their shareholders. Yeah, uh, I think, um, not missing words, the stocks, on the Dangote stable, that is Dangote cement, mm -hmm. Dangote sugar, and Dangote salt, which is NASCON as listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they've really, really rewarded investors over the years. And I think uh, there's no, there is hardly anyone who has invested in any of those three companies that can have any form of regret for doing so over the years. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it, it really proved uh, the, the, the award that uh, indigenous companies mm -hmm. can actually do what the multinationals do. And uh, we, it's really a good one, and which I believe also is going to be sustainable, at least given a track record of more than five years of continuous dividend payment. So I think uh, for those three stocks, they've really added value. And uh, if you combine those three stocks, that is Dangote Sugar, Nascon, though the capitalization is low, and Dangote Cement, the capitalization of those three, stocks those three stocks is more than the capitalization of the entire banking sector stocks. Mm. So those three have really added substantial value to the market. And I believe that um, if we have more indigenous companies being quoted on the exchange, we may see better things happening on the market, giving it depth and more quality. Let's look at the failure of many quoted companies to also submit full audited report. Uh, for 2020 trading year. Some don't really meet these dates. So what do you think uh, about this? Uh, well, I think, um, except for a few, 
which might have notified the Nigerian Stock Exchange okay. that they won't be able to meet up with March 31st. Yeah. Uh, but for several others, they still have today and tomorrow to fully comply with the deadline. So we, it, it will be too soon to say that they have not complied. Mm. So we give them between in the next 24 hours. Mm. If they do not submit their result, then they have run foul of the regulations. Mm. And I think there will be penalty that will come with that. Yeah, penalties always come when, 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 when things like that occur. So what do you, what, okay, you don't, you, well, let's wait until 31st, right? Yeah. So that that's tomorrow, then we see what plays up. Well, normally the NSC gives the permission for you to extend if you, if you notify them, right? Yeah. Okay, so and we don't know how many of them might, might have actually uh, done that. Now, you talked about something I think is around about the next question I want to ask, saying that no more than seven companies uh, them account for about 70% of the whole market structure. Yeah. Is that not worrisome? Uh, well, I think it's not limited here. Okay. If you look at outside Nigeria, if you look at uh, Amazon, if you look at uh, Microsoft, if you look at uh, um, Alphabet, the U.S. markets, all of them are close to $1 trillion capitalization. Mm. And when you take that out from their own market as well, mm. and maybe you pick some other ones, maybe like um, uh, Walmart, by the time you pick those ones, you really see that they have a lot of weight on the market capitalization of the entire NYC or, or NASDAQ. So it's not new. Uh, the Pareto principle is always what works out in a lot of situations. But even this one is even uh, uh, more uh, enticing than the Pareto principle. We say 70%, uh, 30% and count for 70% performance. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we have um, uh, Dangode Cement, we have Bois Cement, we have MTN, we have um, uh, Etel, we have Nestle, we have GT Bank, and we have Zenit. Mm -hmm. Those seven account for 72% of the total market capitalization. Mm. So, um, same, but because of their diversification, we have in ICT, mm. which is MTN and Etel, we have in uh, uh, industrial goods, which is Boa Cement and um, uh, Dangote. Dangote, we have in the consumer goods, which is uh, Nestle, and we also have in the banking, which is uh, uh, GT Bank and Zenit. And when you look at all these companies, they are doing fantastically well in terms of dividend payout and all of that. I, th I think the only one that we've not seen much, the only two we've not seen much as in dividend is uh, Boa Cement and uh, Etel. But I think uh, with the financials that we are, they have been rendering, I think the, there is a good future for all of them. And 72% uh, being represented by seven companies mm -hmm. out of about 160, uh, I think... Um, 162 companies, right? Yes, yes. equities listed on the exchange. Yeah. Uh, is, it could be worrisome because if something happens. Yes. But we know that since, like I said earlier, since they are diversified into different sectors, that we may not need really necessarily have to have such worry. Just like the example I gave of the Amazon, the, uh, um, the uh, Alphabet, the Microsoft, the Walmart in the U.S. market. So I think they've survive that over the years. And I believe these ones have good corporate uh, governance to be able to sustain them for years to come. So you don't think there's any need to change the structure or if we could change it, how can we go about changing it? There is hardly any way you can change it because the only thing that can be done is to look for more companies or to get more companies listed that have good corporate governance and also uh, give good reward to investors. So except when they come, that's the only thing that can actually distinguish them from the others. And uh, we want two things that play out for companies to be highly capitalized. Is one, the way investors perceive them. Mm -hmm. We can see that in the case of uh, Nestle, they have just about 750 million shares listed, and uh, the price is about uh, 1,350. Wow, per share. So that means they have less than a billion shares and we have a high price for them. Yeah. Then when you now look at a, a, a stock like, um, uh, uh, I think, Bois Cement, that has about 35 billion shares, mm. and the price at about uh, 18 era or thereabout. Mm. So when you look at those, so is it that you have 
big uh, number of shares number in issue of shares, yeah. or investors actually value your company that mm -hmm. much. But we also have um, quite a good number of insurance companies who have, that have um, a high number, I mean, a high figure when you talk about the number of shares in issue for them. But the majority of them are playing between, uh, lower than 30 kobo. The total market capitalization of uh, uh, the insurance sector is about maybe about less than one third mm. of the market capitalization of GT Bank. Mm. We have about 20 um, insurance companies listed on the exchange. The very strong one among them uh, is uh, um, Custodian. Okay. And Custodian have really proved its worth. So when you look at st stocks with high market capitalization, go back to the record. You see that they have been very much consistent mm. in giving good rewards to investors. to investors. So it's not just as if something that can be created. They need to, they need to prove their worth. And that's what actually we make a lot of money. But I think uh, I agree with you. We really need to do more work and uh, identify companies that can do much better than what they are doing and maybe uh, uh, get them listed on the exchange. And that way, things definitely can I also saw that Wando, PZ, and FCMB dipped uh, when you look at that, uh, that result. Nigerian stocks end bullish as Wando. What's happening with the oil and gas uh, stocks? The oil price is doing well. Any, any interaction, any reflection of that market? Uh, well, I think um, though Wando operates both, um, uh, both um, downstream and upstream, but they have more activities yeah, I think on the downstream. Down, yes. And uh, when you look at all these companies, Operating in the downstream sector. It's not a good time. And you look at uh, um, Adova, uh, MRS, the one that we're talking about, mm. they have not really been proving their work. Even the uh, mobile, that is uh, 1 1 PLC, yes. and the total, they've not really done much in terms of uh, investors appreciating their value. So I think uh, it's just the way it is. Maybe the margins are too low for them, and things have not really been going on well as it was in the past. So it's not just limited to Owando PLC alone. It costs across for the for all of them playing in the downstream sector. Mm, so it's a downstream issue. Maybe if we deregulate, maybe that sector will get better because that's been the argument for some I, time. I, be, I believe it should. Hmm. Now, today's figures are already out. Uh, uh, I got this in now. My producer just telling me that um, uh, Tuesday's trading is closing negative. And all share index is down 0.60%. Top gainers, we have Livestock, Cotval, Quanest, NPF Microfinance Bank, Royal X, Prestige, FTN Coco, Da Communications, uh, Regalings, and ETI. Can you react to, to this, Mr. Fakayejo? Negative today. It was positive yesterday. Like, we're talking about this. I don't see the market sustaining this positive trend. I was talking to a copy yesterday and... You know, who was optimistic that maybe anything we doesn't know what could actually happen because this market and you it, cannot it, predict. It's, it's always here and there. One thing that we need to know, our measurement should not be uh, for a short period. Mm. Our measurement should be at least for, for a period that, is, that expands more than a day, more than two days. Like we saw last week, the market closed positive for the week. Yes. They closed negative on Friday. And we've just started a new week. So I believe strongly that, for me, I believe that um, the market is going to go have a good traction going forward this year. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, the market is going to be more stable, at least uh, more promising, and uh, also the, uh, we, we have more appreciation. So it's time for investors to actually believe more in this market because it has come to stay. We need so, investors, both local and invest, local and uh, foreign. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Well, for me, I believe we should focus our attention more on the local investors. They are the ones that can actually sustain this market. 2019, the foreign portfolio investors were still here very much. 2020, they boycotted the Nigerian market. But you find out that we had more value and volume traded in 2020 compared to 2019, which means with or without them, this market will move forward. So the, 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 the game changer is our mindset. And uh, the more people that participate in the market, 
the better for the market. Mm. And I think uh, that should be the focus of everyone, both the regulators and the operators. Mr. Otumi Fakarijo, I really appreciate your time. He's a stockbroker financial analyst. Thank you very much for stopping by, spending your afternoon with us on Business Nigeria. We really appreciate this. Pleasure.